So this, my friends, is part two of how to draw a wall cabinet. By the end of this lesson, you will have successfully drawn the face frame of your cabinet, the door of your cabinet, and you will have imported these two hinges. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's start by talking about dimensions. Your face frame is going to be two inches wide by one inch thick, and all four corners are going to have a 45 degree miter joint that we will probably eventually biscuit and attach together. The door is going to be a solid panel door. So we're going to glue one, two, three, four pieces of wood together. And then we're going to attach these cleats on here. Additionally, we are going to import hinges from SketchUp to represent the hinges that you are going to install later on in the shop. Let's start by drawing the face frame. And the face frame in this case is this gray outline piece here. To do that, I'm going to tap the H key and I'm going to move over to my existing model. And I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle, which is exactly the same size as this one. There are two ways to do this. One is you can use the rectangle tool. Two is you can actually use the line tool. So let's try doing the rectangle first. So I'm going to tap the R key to activate the rectangle tool. I'm going to go to this corner and I'm going to draw a rectangle right over the top of another one. If I did it correctly, it should turn white. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually pull that rectangle up by an inch by pushing the P button. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to let go of my mouse and I'm going to type a 1 and I'm going to hit enter. And what this signifies is this thickness of your phrase frame all the way around. The next tool that I'm actually going to use is the offset tool. And I'm going to offset this rectangle by exactly 2 inches. So we'll jump over the offset tool, which is on the left hand side here or I can just simply tap the F key on my keyboard. And I'm gonna click and I'm gonna start dragging and I'm gonna type a two and I'm gonna hit enter. And you'll see that it offset that face frame at exactly two inches. After I offset the face frame, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this down and I'm gonna get rid of it by doing the push pull tool, hit the P button. And I'm gonna start pushing until if you see right there, how it sort of turns dotted it slash grayed out. I'm going to let go right at that point and it should, boom, yes, disappear. After I do that, the next thing I'm going to do is actually draw my miter joints in by using the line tool or tapping the L key. Line tool is also known as the pencil over here. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to connect all four of my corners here. With any new shape that I draw, I typically like to turn it into a group or a component. And in this case, we are actually going to turn it into a group. And if we want to later on, we can turn it into a component. To do that, I'm going to activate my pointer or selection tool. I'm going to triple click on it, one, two, three. And I am triple clicking with the clicker button on my mouse, which is with my index finger. And I'm clicking three times rapidly. If you don't click three times, uh, what you'll happen to do is you just happen to select a piece of this. So once again, one, two, three, really quick with my mouse, right click, and we are going to make this a group. If you did it right, you should be able to click somewhere here in the green, click back on your face frame, and it should turn entirely blue. Now that I have my face frame drawn, the next thing I'm going to do is actually go through and I'm going to teach you how to draw this door right here. This project is intended for those of you that are about seventh grade age. So we could do a fancy dancy raised panel door. But for the simplicity of this project, what we're doing is actually something called a solid or a solid panel door. And what we're doing is actually drawing one, two, three, four pieces of wood. And we are going to attach this piece across the top and this piece across the bottom. And we're also going to import two hinges. Let's go ahead and look at our face frame from roughly a top view. I'm going to tap the R key to activate the rectangle tool. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag a rectangle on the inside there. Now what we don't want to happen is our door to be too tight. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to offset this rectangle by exactly 0.25 of an inch, which is also known as 1 fourth. To do that, I'm going to go to the offset tool here. I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to let go of my mouse. Type in 0.25. I'll hit enter. 
And if you notice really quick here, if I zoom in, I can see that this is then exactly offset by a quarter of an inch. The next thing I'm going to do is actually jump over to my selection tool. I'm going to select that space right there. And then on my keyboard, right above my up arrow, I'm going to hit the delete key. And I'm going to remove that, which will indicate the sort of quarter inch gap all the way around. After I do that, the next thing I need to do is actually give my door some thickness. To do that, I'm going to activate my push-pull tool using the P key. I'm going to click P, and I'm going to push it up by exactly one inch. And I'll hit enter. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to go ahead and start to draw our planks in here. To do that, I need to figure out how wide I drew them in. These planks are sized so that we can easily run them through the jointer and planer next door. And part of the reason that they are, yep, four inches is so that we can actually take our rough stock and we can easily joint it and plane it down to our finish thickness and also something called S4S, which means that it's been surfaced on all four sides. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and change my view until I'm looking at roughly a top view. I'm going to activate my tape measure tool by pushing the T key. And somewhere on this line right here, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this way along the red axis in my case. And I'm going to type 4 and I'm going to enter. Then I'm going to use that dotted line as reference. Click over. I'm going to drag 4 and then I'm going to type enter. Click. Drag over, four, and I'm going to click enter. And what you'll see is that this is a four inch plank, this is a four inch plank, this is a four inch plank, and this is going to be some other dimension. After I have my reference lines drawn in, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to jump over the pencil tool, and I'm just going to start connecting the dots. So line, line tool, just tap an L on your keyboard, or you can find it right over here. I need to continue those lines down to here. I'm not going to worry about the back side right now. We can always pull this out later on and edit the back side. Sometimes in SketchUp models, it doesn't really make sense if you draw, for example, the entirety of the back won't actually impact what we build in the shop. Um, sometimes in SketchUp, I'll draw just enough to give me the dimensions to make sure everything works before I transition over to the shop. All right, there we have it. Let me throw some dimensions on there. So if you missed it, you can hit pause on this video and make sure that your boards, yep, are exactly four, four, four. And let's see what this last piece is here. One, inch and nine sixteenths of an inch all right we have the basics of our door drawn in so what i'm going to do next is i'm actually going to turn this into a group so selection tool triple click on it one two three right click and go to make group the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to draw this brown piece of wood right here and this brown piece of wood right here we are also going to import a hinge here and import a hinge here. And then our model is done and ready for the build process. Let's talk first about why there is a piece of wood here. So this piece of wood, the function of this piece of wood is a very simplistic way to sort of keep the door flat. If we were to just glue this together into a large slab of lumber, what would maybe happen over time is that your door would dry and it would shrink and it would have sort of an arch shape to it. So it's an easier way than traditional cabinet making to build a door. Um, and I also think it's something that we could maybe, if you make a mistake, for example, on this piece, we could recycle this piece into these sort of two strips right here. Let's go ahead and draw this strip right here. And then we're going to copy paste it from here to the top edge. So our strip of wood is two inches wide by a half inch thick by exactly whatever the length of the door is here. We go ahead and move over. And I'm going to activate my tape measure tool by pushing the T key. Click somewhere on the middle of the line. And I'm going to drag it over by exactly two. And I'm going to hit enter. 
At that two inch mark, I'm going to use my line tool and I'm going to start connecting the dots. I drew a line there. And the goal here is to draw a rectangle all the way around. If you did it right, you should be able to activate your push pull tool with the P button. And pull it up by a half an inch. Now, if you happen to pull it up too far, like I just did, uh, because I had somebody interrupt this recording, what I can always do is I can always push it back down to the half inch dimension. I'll show you how to do that right now. I'm going to activate the tape measure tool. I'm going to click and I'm going to start dragging along this edge. Let go of my mouse. I'm going to type in a 0.5. And if you notice, ever so subtly, there's a tiny little dot there. That gives me a push-pull to point. That's a lot of P's, by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and push that down right to that dot, and it'll automatically snap it right to that point. In this case, I'm actually going to take this cleat piece of wood, whatever you want to call it, I'm actually going to turn it into a component. To do that, I'm going to triple click on it. One, two, three, right click and hit make component. And let's call that door cleat. And I already have one, so I'm going to make it door cleat two. Now what I can do is I can tap the M key and control key. So I'm going to tap the M key once, tap the control key once, and I can click and I can drag this all the way over. Now, the cool thing with this is this is a component, this is a component, and if I color this one, it should color the other one. And I'm going to go ahead and do that by activating my bucket tool for paint bucket. And let's go ahead and open this. All right, there we go. Let's use that brownish color right there. And like I said, did not color them both. Whatever, that's fine. All right, so we have our doorway pretty much built. And the next thing I need to do is go through and find the component. Uh, and this right here, this component that I'm going to try to find is these two particular hinges. To find your component, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go over to here. And you're going to hover. And this is the third down where it says components. You're going to click on it. And let's see if I can show you. Yours should look something like this. Now, the 3D warehouse is something where you can actually import things that other people have drawn, and it's vast. Um, if you import something that's way too complex, the way that our bandwidth is, is you might actually slow down your computer, or you might crash your computer. But these are two pretty simple hinges, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to type in hinge, and I'm going to start scrolling and seeing if there is a particular style hinge that I like. Let's change that maybe to strap hinge. S T R I P. Strap to strap hinge. And let's go through and see if we can find. Yep, there it is right there. So it's a four inch strap hinge by Daniel H. Uh, there's a little tiny download button here. So 300 people have downloaded this. Or you can just click on the image itself. And we're going to add and click and we're going to drop that into our model. Now, my strap hinge actually looks pretty close to the right size, but typically what will happen is when you import from the 3D warehouse is that your scale will be completely off. So it'll be either way too huge or way too small. So go ahead and try this with me. Go ahead and click on your hinge. And then I want you to type the S key for scale. And you'll see a green box appear. And if I go from corner to corner or if I go from top to bottom, I can scale it up and down this way. I could also scale it back and forth this way. If this was a real model with actual pieces that needed to fit, I would scale it to exactly the right size. But in our case, I'm going to give you hinges that you're going to install that will be the right size. So we're just going to get it close and we're going to go ahead and pop it into place. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it down to what I think roughly the right size is. So that looks pretty good. Go back to my selection tool. And do you notice how the modeler actually left you these two little lines which is really nice because we can use those to snap it to the edge of our cabinet now it doesn't really matter if you put your hinges on the left side or the right side um, in this case i'm going to go ahead and flip my hinges around by tapping the q key for rotate and i'm going to go ahead and try to rotate it around whoop that is not right try that again i'm going to tap the q key 
And sometimes I struggle to rotate things, and you will too. Just be patient. Hey, there we go. And if you look down on the bottom right, I'm at 170. Okay, I'm going to type in 180 degrees. So we'll hit enter. Then I'm going to go ahead and tap the M key and move it into place. Tap the S key for scale. And let's go ahead and scale it down to roughly the appropriate size. Click over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and move my hinge to roughly where I want it to be. And if you notice, I have to move everything more than once, which is pretty typical on SketchUp. Yeah, we're getting closer. Okay. And let's move it down to the line. Yep. All right. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We're going to move it up just a hair here. All right. Once I'm my first hinge position, I'm going to copy paste it downwards. So I'm going to tap the M key, control key. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag out a brand new hinge. And if you're struggling, you see how I'm struggling to drag mine over. What I can do on my keyboard is I can start tapping arrows. So this is the up arrow, which is going to force me to go up and down. This is the right arrow, which is going to force me to go this way. This is the left arrow. And that, if I tap my left arrow, it's actually going to force me to move it on the green axis. So that looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to drop it there. And it looks like we have successfully built a simple wall cabinet design on SketchUp. So your simple wall cabinet, you should have a brown cleat, brown cleat, two door hinges. You should also have one, two, three, four planks, if you will, or four pieces of wood. And you should have all of the appropriate dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop on this video. And part three of this is going to be writing your design for printing. Hey, if you're a maker, if you're a shop teacher, you know that time is precious. So go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Give me a like if you like this video. Give me a comment, even better yet, to know that you exist out in the world. And if you are one of my students, let's go ahead and head next door to the shop and build this thing, hey? Eh?